Good afternoon. Uh, hi, I'm Danny Horn. This is Thomas Adrobny. Uh We work for Wikia, and I welcome you to our presentation uh, for this slot. Um, Wikia is a website that hosts uh, small wikis. Basically, anybody who has a passion, something that they love and want to write about, can get together with other people and do it on a wiki platform. Uh, right now, we've got about 200,000 wikis. And I actually am curious, people in the room who have been on Wikia, who have contributed to Wikia, I want to know where the Wikia people are. All right, awesome. Can I just, like, a couple of, what Wiki have you been on? Uh, Lyric Wiki, uh, some other ones. Lyric Wiki, it's fantastic. 24 Wiki. 24, oh, that's great. And who is it you? Somebody else? Give me one more. Skyrim Wiki. Skyrim Wiki, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, yeah, all right, so then that's a lot of what we got. So entertainment stuff, music, TV, uh, video games, crazy humor, all kinds of stuff. A um, couple of seats over here. A couple of seats over here. Uh, what we want to talk about is some work that Tomek and I have been doing uh, for about the last year, looking at the user talk page and how we can build a different kind of communication system. Um, there's stuff that we love that's super, super important about user talk pages. It encourages really thoughtful, ongoing conversations. Um, wikis, and specifically on talk pages, it's one of the very few places on the internet where people really talk in paragraphs. And I love that, it's amazing about us. Uh, it's, we're writers and editors, and we love to write. Um, another thing that's really important about it is it, it, the communication system is integrated with all the other kinds of systems on the wiki. It's not sort of a separate part that's away from article editing or uploading. Um, so it's integrated with, we've got a wiki activity feed as well as recent changes. It has a history, it's part of somebody's contributions. Um, another thing that's really important is that it's public and it belongs to everybody. So even if I leave a message on a person's talk page, anybody who sees it can get involved. And that's actually kind of special. Um, and also that everything is archived. You don't lose anything, you don't delete anything. I think the wireless one works. Am I, am I not? Loud enough? All right. I will do this. I will be louder. Uh, so, awesome stuff. The, uh, some problems with the talk page system that I think everybody here is probably familiar with uh, is that the first time you meet anybody, you have to say, hi, welcome. Here's the instructions for how to say hello back. Um, <laughs> not super accessible and always makes me sad. Um, we have to explain like how do you put in headings, how to use colons for indent, how do you sign your name. Um, signing your name, it turns out, I don't know if folks here realize this, turns out that was pretty much nailed by everybody else on the internet quite a long time ago. Um, <laughs> for us, not so much. And then also there's you know, confusion about exactly where do I reply. Um, and watch lists are super important and awesome. Uh, but kind of a pain when you're trying to leave a message on, you know, on somebody's talk page, uh, you watch their page and then you get an email every time they update their user page or somebody else talks about something else. And then also for me, as somebody on Wikia, um, I'm a big contributor to the Wiki that I started, Muppet Wiki, and it's really easy to lose track of all the conversations that I'm having on all these different pages. So what we've been working on for a while is an update for that and a way to keep all of the stuff that's really super crucial about user talk pages and also deal with some of these things, make it a little more accessible uh, and a little easier to use. This is what we came up with. It's called a message wall. Um, and we gave it that name, message wall, because essentially um, when people hear that phrase, they make some assumptions about how it's going to work and what they can do with it. And those assumptions are basically correct. That was a big uh, goal for us. And that's actually a slide I will now show you in real life. Here I am on my wiki, just to kind of scroll down a little bit. Uh, this is basically what it looks like. Folks are, that sounds amazing. Uh, place to write, and then there's threads as you go down, basically like a regular user talk page, except there's a place to reply. And I can keep going. And then also, um, if there's a really, really long conversation, uh, and we had a little bit of a problem with 119 recently, uh, you can use this to then see everything all the way down the darn page. Um, so that's how that works. And I will kind of go through some of that now. Um, so this is 
how you use it. Uh, this is my friend Banjo Dog. He's a sock puppet, and uh, and he's a dog, and he can play the banjo, so that is very special for him. Um, the way that it works is you can put in a title, and then you write the message. Uh, it loads with our uh, what we call the mini editor. It's like a mini visual editor, so that you can do stuff like creating links or external links, um, all that kind of stuff. You can do here. You hit post, and then it posts it right there on the page. Um, automatically, Banjo Dog just posted this message, so automatically he's following it. Um, he's posting it on my wall, so I'm automatically following it too. Uh, you can sort of toggle that on and off if you don't want to hear about it anymore. And what else we got? So Banjo Dog left me a message, and then here I am with a little one for my notifications, and now I get a notification that, uh, that he left me a message, which is awesome. And I click on that, and that actually doesn't take me directly to my wall. It just takes me to the thread, um, which is another thing with user talk pages that's kind of hard sometimes. So you know that somebody's making an edit. It's hard to say exactly where. Often you have to look at a diff to find out. Uh, for this, for the message wall, we just put that thread on a separate page. Um, and there I am replying to it. So we've got the, um, the mini editor stuff, but we can also just use regular wiki text for links and for uh, for italics, for all that, basically anything. Like you can put a picture in, you can put a uh, gallery in, whatever you can do in Wikitext, you can do here. That posts. Um, you can also, there's a little drop down for each thread and also for each reply. Um, and so you can, for example, edit my post, which I'm about to do. And so now this indicates that it was edited a minute ago. And then there's a history for it. So again, we really wanted to make sure that this stuff all worked in line with wiki people's expectations about how much you can see um, and how much sort of control you have over what's going on. So we've got a, a history for each thread. We've got a history for the whole wall. And in the thread history, you can see diffs and find out what got edited. It also appears in recent changes like this. And so uh, it's just listed under the name of the thread. Um, so this is Banjo Dog writing to me. This is me writing back and then editing. This is our wiki activity feed. Same kind of thing. Uh, on the wiki activity feed, we actually don't feel like we have to show absolutely everything in chronological order. So for any of these message wall conversations, we can kind of squish it together, give you the two most recent in that conversation. If you're interested in this, then you can click through to the thread page. That's how that works. Uh, and then also, and then also, this is uh, my contribution. So it's again showing me leaving that message, and then a diff for the thing that I edited. At the bottom of the page, uh, it also automatically archives. So this is all the way down at the bottom. It'll paginate, and then also, uh, you know, on Muppet Wiki we had about six years worth of conversations before we turned on the message wall all on user talk pages. And we know obviously that that is huge, um, a huge part of our history on the wiki. So we don't want to throw anything away. We don't want to delete everything. So when we turn the message wall on, it just automatically archives everything. And then I click on that link. So that stuff is still there. All the history is still there. We just don't need to use exactly that system anymore. What else we got? And also, another thing that's important on wikis is, is that people are able to sort of, the community can kind of monitor what's going on on the site. So if there's something bad that gets posted, we have a little remove function so that you can go in either for the whole thread or for that message. And you hit remove. And then it asks why you want to remove it. Um, everybody has to fill this in. If I'm going to take something off of a wall, we prefer that people don't on the whole um, because Obviously, all that stuff is sort of part of the history. If it's something real bad, though, and you have to, then you just are explaining why to the rest of the wiki. If you want, you can click a box that says notify an admin, and an admin on the wiki will just get a one-time notification that says, hey, there was a problem over here. You might want to check in on that person. You hit remove, and it goes away. Um, that appears there just that first time for me, so I know it's done. Um, anytime anybody else goes to that page, they won't see it. But that stuff is also still part of, this is now a wall history, which shows posts that are created, deleted, removed, whatever. 
And so for this one, it's showing that that thread got created. And there's the summary that I wrote about why I removed it. And then it's still there. It's still part of the wiki. Um, if you click through on a, on a link from either contributions or from that wall history, you end up on this page where it's telling you that this is removed and it's telling you why. Um, this took us forever <laughs> to figure out, like just the, uh, the mechanics of, OK, we want to make it easier for people to take off bad stuff. But if taking something off is the bad thing that they're doing, we want to make it easy for people to put it back. It was fun. That was a fun. Several is months, yeah. Wiki or is it uh, this is actually all built on top of BBWiki. Okay. Yeah, and you want to say anything about how it's built? Um, yeah, sure. Um, every post basically is a, a sub page to to message wall of this user. A message wall is a namespace, so we're just creating an an article. So so we maintain whole history and everything is working exactly as the article page. And I think that's. Yeah, because because every of these these things is a, a separate uh, article. We <coughs> need to combine the, the 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 history and show it as a different page than than nor than history of talk page. Yeah, which which is just one single pile of text. Um, yeah, and it's just skin on top of of this list of articles. So I know I ran through all of that super fast because it's a lot of stuff and I wanted to show everybody. Was there anything I kind of skipped through that didn't make sense or anybody has a question just about kind of how it works? Yeah. I have two questions. Yeah. First one is um, do you still have the ability to oversight things on that? There's a really nasty personal attack people posting personal information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just that remove thing. If I can click in there and go to remove, it'll take it out of people's view and then Especially if uh, if I'm not an admin, anybody can do that. Can like take something out the same way that anybody would be able to edit a talk page and take out something that's nasty. Um, and then admins also have the power at that point to just delete it and really take it out of everybody's view. And also, did you get inspired? It seems like really similar to the Facebook wall. Yeah, you notice that. <laughs> That is not a coincidence. Actually, yeah. To me, it looks like the old style post forum. Like the old PHP BB stuff? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we took inspiration from a bunch of places, but Facebook was definitely one of them. Um, we actually did, like, maybe more than a year ago, we did, like, a really quick alpha hack to try to figure out how to do this kind of thing. And at the time, we called it an inbox, and we tried to make it look like Gmail. And it, it worked, you know, a lot of the structure of it was the same and, and you could reply and, and it was sort of structured as threads. Um, we showed that alpha demo to people just who worked in our office, who are, you know, are real people who know wikis and know how they work. Everybody got it, everybody liked it, up until the point that they said, so can I see what other, pe other people are working on or talking about? And we said, sure. You go to their inbox and then you read their messages. And everybody freaked out, um, just, and you know, and I had it was oh, it was a long afternoon of just like I was doing these tests with one person after another after another. Each time I would say, "What words can we use that will make you not freak out like that?" Kept trying it, just structuring it to look like Gmail just felt wrong, and so you know the whole team was looking at that stuff and saying, "There has got to be something on the internet where you can direct, you know, have a conversation directed at a person." Other people can see it and talk, and that just feels OK. <laughs> and so we went down the list of the most popular websites in the world. We got to number two. <laughs> that's it. They nailed it. Um, <laughs> so that's why, you know, yeah, we, we definitely took a lot of inspiration from them. They also, like, stuff like having a thread page on a separate thing that you get to from the notifications. Um, we've been working on a lot of things for the last six years. Facebook has been working on this. Um, so it turned out that they were good inspiration. But there's also a lot of other stuff. And we um, obviously put in a lot of the things like um, the remove and talk histories and stuff like that. That is really just sort of that's our wiki stuff. It needs to work that way. Young Tick, yes? So this question could get you in trouble with this crowd. <laughs> but you said, oh, this took us so long. And yeah. given the demise of liquid threads and uh, maybe the visual editor is going to happen this year and not the Wikipedia. I'm actually wondering how is it you're able to innovate in this way when Wikipedia has not been this week? Uh, I'm going to throw that question out to the crowd. 
uh, for everybody to crowdsource? What do you guys think? It's just, it's, um, we can go a little bit Wikipedia, faster, I think, obviously, the Wikipedia. Right? Yeah, a lot of this stuff, and, and you know, I've been talking to, we work a lot with the guys from Wikimedia Foundation. We're all familiar with each other's projects. And, um, you know, between us and Wikimedia, and then also a lot of other people who are running wiki platforms, uh, we're trying to answer a lot of the same questions. And so we can go a little bit faster sometimes because we can just make stuff. And so actually I'll show you the kind of thing that we've been doing. Uh, so this is, we did our first beta test on about 10 wikis in October, and then in February, put it live in what we call Wikia Labs and let people turn it on. Uh, so the admins for each wiki decide we want to use this on our wiki. And it's been just a really nice gradual pickup. Um, right now it's about 7,700 wikis, uh, including about 160 of our top 500. And this is the kind of thing that happens um, once people turn it on. So this is one of our wikis, The Vampire Diaries, it's based on a TV show. Um, you can see that in the summertime, so this is, the blue is talk page messages that were posted on that wiki, and then the red is message wall posts. During the summer, obviously, it's kind of dead, new season starts up. Then in January, they put the message wall on, and automatically, there start to be more posts. And so that's interesting. The thing that I'm really excited about is this. Uh, each of these is unique people posting on a message wall for Vampire Diaries Wiki in that month. And obviously, uh, it got a lot more people involved. Um, and I think a lot of that sort of the accessibility issues went away. So that's Vampire Diaries. Show you a couple others. Uh, Resident Evil Wiki, same kind of thing. Uh, so talk page edits versus message wall posts. Same kind of thing for the contributors. Um, this is basically the pattern that we're seeing. And uh, just a little while ago, we're, we're now sort of working on uh, taking this kind of structure and creating a forum around it. Um, Beth, Beth L23, is the founder of the Children's Books Wiki. And so she posted uh, to me and told me, you know, we're talking about forums. She's saying we don't use forums right now at all. Um, I've seen a big increase in the amount of messages users have been posting since the introduction of the message wall. Clearly that UI really takes away the fear factor of leaving a message, which was awesome to hear, especially because I think that children's book wiki, different than Resident Evil, different than Vampire Diaries, like it's not that kind of like gamer, if you'll pardon the expression, nerd kind of you know wiki. It's more, uh, and I say that as a Muppet nerd myself, uh, <laughs> you know, this, it's actually more moms. Um, who have young kids and want to write about the books that they're enjoying with their children um, and aren't necessarily familiar with the edit window and, and all that stuff, wiki text. So this is what happens on children's books. It's obviously a much smaller number to start with, but we've seen that same kind of pickup. And then this has also been really nice. So really small numbers, but November and December, two unique people in that month um, posting on user talk pages goes up to nine when they put on the message wall. And two to nine for that wiki is really, really huge and important. Um, so this is just a, a quick table of the kind of increases that we've seen. Basically, I should go back. Uh, what that table is showing is we've got, what is this, five months that they've been using message wall compared to the previous five months before they started. And this is basically what we're seeing. Um, Dragon Veil Wiki is an iPad game. Uh, and we've definitely seen, like, with that kind of casual gamer, um, this is working really well. Um, but we've also got sort of all the, our more typical entertainment stuff and gaming stuff. Once people put this on, we're just seeing more people having more conversations. And what else do I have? And so it's really, really hard for us to say, and that turned into people making article edits. Because there's actually, on each of these individual wikis, there's a lot of reasons why there might be, basically it's like there's new content about this. For a TV show like Vampire Diaries, it goes up and down based on the season. Um, for video games, it goes up and down based on releases and DLC. Um, but I thought, what the heck, I'll try anyway. Um, so what this is based on, these are the wikis uh, in red here that as of this week have turned on message wall. So it's not sort of, it's not counting them as they turned it on, this is just, um, how those contributions have gone for that set of 160 wikis. And then this is the other 340 in the top 500. 
And so I ran that number, and I thought, well, that actually looks kind of cool. I'm not going to take credit for it. I'm just going to put it on a slide and show it to people. <laughs> See what happens. So that's also something that we've been really excited about. And now I will take more questions. Yes? Yeah, uh, what about the articles on pages? So what a good question. Or project pages. Like in Wikipedia, there's uh, mm -hmm. project, uh, post, project, art. Yeah, that's there's a lot of places where people talk. Yeah, on the wikis, and, and so that includes, I mean, there's also category talk. There's all kinds of places. Um, where we are right now is we've now done this with user talk, and we're very happy to see the results that we've got. The next thing that we're doing that we're working on right now, and we'll, we're going to release the first beta demo of it onto a couple wikis next week, is a forum system that's based on that same kind of accessible structure, and also that feeds into that same notification system. Um, and so that's sort of part two for us um, at that point. Once people are used to that and like it, if it turns out that we can connect those conversations to articles, we're going to see how that goes. Um, I'm sort of optimistic about the whole thing. Uh, but there's still kind of a lot of development that we need to do. Yeah? I'm not maybe late, but I'm not sure if you answered, but is this open source? This is open source. Yeah. Yes. Whole wiki code is accessible. Uh, we have SVN repository. And we are happy to share things. Hi. So I don't know if you've got when someone remembers when it says um, first by admin. How does it select the admin or is it just a random? So it's like one of them we have here is that all of that. Sysdops. People with uh, sysdop privileges. Yeah, well, what I mean is how does it, how does it, how does it choose which one? Exactly. Um, for our wikis, you know, for Wikipedia, it's a little different because y Wikipedia has, I don't know how many admins? Thousands. Thousands. Uh, yeah, that would work different. Um, for our wikis, it's usually, like on an active wiki, there might be five or 10. And so what that does, you click notify an admin, it puts a little notification in for every admin until one of them sees it and clicks on it. And then as soon as one person has seen it, one admin has sort of clicked through to, to take a look at it, we take that notification away. Yeah, and yeah, we could be doing that with uh, sort of to, to make it more like a system of like patrolling like people do. A funny thing that's happened with this is we worked real hard on that remove and restore thing, and um, I don't think people are using it that much. It's good, like I'm glad that we have it. Um, it's really important. Those moments that you need it, you really need it. Um, I think it's possible, I have a theory that I'm kind of just not seeing it very much, that possibly uh, it's easier to be a jerk or be a vandal on a regular user talk page because you hit edit, you just type everything in capital letters and you hit save. Um, on this, here, uh, the way that it works, let's say I'm posting something, uh, my avatar is next to it and it's gonna post with my name and if I'm not logged in, it's gonna post with my IP address. Um, I think there's something about that design and that functionality that makes Vandal spamming a little bit less exciting of a thing to do. Um, so, we, you know, people, it's there, but we're not actually seeing folks use it that much right now. Yeah. Do you have anything to deal with Xtrover? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Do you have anything built into it to deal with Xtrover spamming? Xtrover spamming. Xtrover is a spam bot? I'm not familiar with this. Otherwise. I'm not familiar with that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's set up actually for us. Um, we have a welcome bot, and it's set up uh, to allow that to happen. I don't know if we've had any problems with spamming this at this point. Um, I'm going to take maybe like one more question, but then there's other people who are going to speak. Yeah. Um, does Wikia do any community that has message wall use templates as messages? And did you see an increase or a decrease in the use of templates versus normal human messages occurring on message wall? You mean templates like, like giving a warning or something like that? Or giving a welcome or whatever. Uh, we've got an automatic. Uh, welcome thing that happens, and, and each wiki can basically create their own welcome template. So it's still using the one that, that people have already set up. Uh, yeah, there's some there's a, a little space that people can customize and above that. Also, I, I'm not sure if I understand correct the question, but your concern is that instead of using a template, now people need to write the the, the no, thing. I you can you can still. No, he's, he's, uh, okay, he's but you, you, yeah. can, you can yeah, still use minute. actually a template inside the, the message wall messages Bec because we're we running the message through the, the same parser which article runs. So. I just
messages I really love. Uh, all right, there are people who have messages. I want to or messages questions. Uh, I want to talk to everybody, and luckily I have the next like four days of my life to do that. But these guys got bumped from the last presentation. They gotta get up here. Feeling bad yeah. about that. If you guys want tough pigs um, on the Muppet Wiki, you can talk to him. Yeah, and also on the I was, message wall. Yeah, you can come to my message wall. That was me up there with the Miss Piggy icon. Um, and then also my, uh, I'd, you were just taking a look for probably longer than you needed to uh, at our email addresses. So I'll be here. Love to talk to you. Um, so I'm Steven, and I'm an English Wikipedia admin. I'm, an, I'm a commoner, commonist. I, I don't know. Commoner. Is, anyone, is, is there consensus <laughs> about how to say that? Yeah. Commons editor. Um, and I work at the Wikimedia Foundation as well on an experimental features team. Ah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, and uh, I'm Mariana, also an English Wikipedian, uh, and I also work for the foundation on the same team that Stephen works on. Um, okay. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to talk about a project we did um, for about six months, along with other things, at the Wikimedia Foundation in order to address issues of editor recruitment and engagement, um, which is something that we're primarily interested in. Um, how many of you know exactly how the fundraising banners work and how they're, how, how they're chosen. Okay, so I'll go over that really quickly. The basic idea is that the fundraiser doesn't just put up banners and say, we think that's good, let's go with that. They A, B test, they comparatively test different versions um, from different people, Jesus. Um, <laughs> computer, obey. Um, <laughs> um, uh, comparatively test different versions to get data that informs them about how that works. So what we were interested in was applying the A-B testing methods, methods of the fundraiser to community-owned content on the wikis that's very widely used and is delivered in sort of like semi-automated semi or fully automated ways um, in order to get data about making, to make good decisions as a community about what goes in these messages. Um, uh, and why this is important is, uh, unlike Wikia communities, Wikipedians primarily talk to new users using these templates, template messages. Um, they're delivered by bots or tools um, like Huggle or Twinkle. Some of you may be familiar with these. Um, so what you're seeing here is a graph of uh, the messages that are delivered to new users on English Wikipedia. And it's historical. So you can see uh, towards that side, uh, at the very beginning, at the beginning of time, uh, all of the messages were personalized. They were people writing to people. Uh, and slowly, these big tools and bots came in and took over, and now they've colonized their entire world. And um, you can see about 80% of first messages to new users come from a bot or a tool, um, and they're a templated message. Yeah, and even on Wikipedias that don't use automated tools like Huggle or Twinkle, um, there are still uh, many, many bots that deliver messages, and on some Wikipedias, there are, not on English, there are extensions that automatically deliver a welcome message to every single new user that registers. Um, so regardless of how they're delivered, templates are how many, if not most, of new editors on Wikipedia get interaction. Um, we don't want to go too deeply into the technical uh, function of how the testing works. Suffice it to say that we did it using parser functions and other things that are available in Wikitext. Like Wikitext is so complicated that it's actually like a low-level programming language that we use to like randomly deliver message different messages based on time. Um, if you want to talk about it more, we can show you how to do it so that you could start testing on your own wiki. Um, and what we tested, uh, the three major sort of kinds of messages that are delivered to new users. Uh, warnings about vandalism, spam, uh, all kinds of different warnings that happen. Uh, deletion notifications, so when your article is tagged for deletion, you get a notification on your talk page saying your article is tagged for deletion. So we tested two of the three kinds of deletion, deletion messages that happen on English Wikipedia, um, proposed deletion and articles for deletion. Uh, and welcome messages. Um, self-explanatory, and we delivered them to thousands of editors on English, German, and Portuguese Wikipedia. Um. Yeah. 
Um, so we, we wanted to give some examples of the templates we actually changed. And if it's OK, we'll go ahead and read the two versions of one same template to sort of give you a feel for the styles we were going for. So this is the warning, this is the warning message you get on English Wikipedia when you edit a biography of a living person and there's a mistake in it. It says, welcome to Wikipedia. Please be aware of Wikipedia's policy that biographical information about living persons must not be, include unsupported or inaccurate statements. Whenever you add possibly controversial statements about a living person to an article, I'm already bored. Um, <laughs> and, uh, must include proper sources. If you don't know how to cite a source, you may want to read Wikipedia's referencing for beginner's guidelines. Thank you, blah. No, see, like, uh, we're, I made a joke, but this, the, the person who wrote this message is actually trying to be helpful, you know? Like, they're like, here's the beginner's guide about how to cite a source. Here's the, here's the ways we go about that. But, like, you kind of get a feel for what's going wrong with these messages. And here's a, the new version of the, this template that we wrote. Uh, I, I won't read it, but the, the really important part that we um, want to single out here is that it starts with I edit to under the username blah. Um, that was a major change that we made. We, what we discovered when we looked at these templates, which by the way have not changed in content since uh, like 2006, um, they were created and then everyone just used them forever and they're still using them. Um, what we sort of discovered is that they're really passive and sound really institutional. And so we, we wanted to try to rewrite them to make them more personalized and to highlight the fact that a real human is actually somewhere behind this mm -hmm. scary robot. Um, um, so we're, we did about 15 tests with the 12,000 editors, um, and we have a full report that's on meta, including links to all our data and you know p-values and all the kind of statistical crap that bores me to tears. But it's very important. And um, <laughs> but we wanted to sort of distill what we actually learned into 10 like fundamental conclusions for how we should be writing uh, templates and other notifications to all users, and especially new ones. Uh, so, lesson one, uh, about half of English Wikipedia editors actually read their talk page messages immediately uh, after receiving them. Uh, we discovered this using crazy, hacky tools. Um, uh, but so, it's, it, they actually do read these messages, and we, that was sort of our fundamental uh, starting point. We wanted to know, does anyone actually ever read these crazy templates? Turns out they do. Uh, and this is registered and unregistered editors, by the way, I should say. So. Yeah, for people who are interested, we, we measured this by um, the, the, the thing that gives you this new messages banner is actually a table. So you just pull that table uh, continuously like, and see every time whether someone has it on or has it off. And if the only way to dismiss it is to click on the banner that, and visit your talk page, then we know when you visited your talk page or not. Obviously, this is anonymized data. Um, so. With that in mind, um, I think the most important lesson for us, um, or one of the most important lessons, was not just that people read these messages, but that the solution isn't just to get rid of templates altogether. That there actually is an appreciable difference between different kinds of templates, and not leaving someone a notification is worse than giving someone even the longest, most arcane template. Um, we learned this through testing with a bot that very accurately and automatically um, finds test edits, so times when people click the example wiki text buttons and then save them in an article, um, so, and without nothing else in them. So these aren't people that are, you can anyway say, are making some kind of intentionally malicious change over and over and over again. This is the first message they get. Um, and we compared a bot that gives no notification for that and a bot that gives a template. Um, and the bot that delivered a template notification along with its reversion had a much, the editors went on to, um, continue to edit and not be blocked at a much higher rate than people who got no notification about why what they were doing was incorrect. Um. Uh, another lesson, the more templates you see on a user talk page, the less effective any one of those templates actually is. Um, pretty obvious. Uh, so we, we've, and we see this all the time on English Wikipedia, right? We look at talk pages, you'll see walls of warnings, um, and they're actually not really doing what they're supposed to be doing um, because when they conglomerate like that, they, the, the message just gets drowned out in noise. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because on a, on the, when we looked at our data, we actually had to filter out for people who'd received um, multiple messages of warnings because there was no statistical confidence in, in the test because people didn't read the message when they had 20 of the same warnings over and over again. Um, yeah. And then, uh, in terms of actual like retention and activity of these new editors, when we compared 
uh, the kind of like personal shorter warnings versus the longer impersonal third person voice warnings, we did see a pretty significant um, increase in the activity or the decrease. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to explain because if you if you were reverted, that is the biggest predictor of uh, de decreasing your editing activity, and all editors in the tests um, were reverted. So we're we're measuring how much did their editing decrease after being reverted and warned. Um, so these numbers are looking at only editors who did not go on to be blocked for any length of time um, or receive further warning. So we're looking at editors who we actually wanted to keep editing. Um, and there was an 80% decrease in the activity for people who received standard warnings, and there was only a 20% decrease for people who received more personalized warnings. Right, we, and we also did a lot of uh, qualitative hand coding of these new users' contributions just to check um, to make sure that they were, in fact, people that we did want to retain. I mean, obviously, we don't want vandals and spammers to keep editing. Um, so we did. We looked only for good faith people, um, and that was what informed these like good productive results. Yeah. Um, and one of the one of the text changes that um, we put in every single test we did that performed in a pretty outstanding way was using first person active voice and stating that you did X for X reason to someone rather than saying your change has been reverted by some mysterious power. Um, <laughs> like to, to say I'm like I, I'm a human being, I'm an experienced Wikipedian and I thought your change was was poor for this reason. Like this is how you fix it if you want to. Thank you for contributing. But also please don't do that again. Like you know, like um, it's a very small change, but it's very powerful. This is actually a quote from one of the, the level one warnings that are pretty common that we changed to. So I wanted to let you know that I undid one of your recent contributions because it didn't seem appear constructed to me. Uh, another great lesson, less is more. Uh, even if you don't speak German, you can probably figure out what's going on here. Uh, so on the bottom, we have the, the default uh, welcome message on German Wikipedia, um, which has lots and lots and lots of links and lots of points. It's actually one of the shorter default welcome messages <laughs> I've seen. Um, but we made it even shorter, and uh, the, 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 the results that we got out of it suggest that people edit overwhelmingly more when they receive this kind of message versus the giant wall of text um, with tons of links that send them to places they don't understand. So, yeah. And thankfully, if there's anything that's true in this world, it's that Germans love data. And they've already, they, they've, they've already changed. Like the German yes. community has already changed their welcome template. And Thank the you, German Wikipedians. Yeah. So th yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the next lesson is that... Um, the m one of the more powerful things you can do is directly invite uh, new editors to talk to you. Um, so this, this chart is actually of a hand-coded sample of where new editors asked questions um, in their first contribution history. And uh, the number two places were either the other user's talk page, who'd left them a message, or their own talk page. Um, help spaces like the reference desk, AFD discussions, help desk, that kind of thing were used much, much less. So one of the changes that we made that seemed to be successful um, was saying, was not just signing the talk page message and leaving a link to their talk page in your signature, but saying, if you have a question for me, here's my talk page and linking directly to it. Um, uh, so um, it's not just about being nice. Uh, we. We, do, we want to stress that this is not about making templates friendly and happy and putting lots of smiley faces on them. Um, the kinds of templates that work, they, they actually point the new, the new user to ways of solving the problem that the template was intended to correct. Um, basically, uh, all of the external extraneous links that get put into these templates aren't really helping the person solve the problem. If they made an unsourced edit to a biography of a living person, that's the issue that they want to actually understand how to fix. And um, we found that templates that were very specific about which problem the person had to solve um, were just better at getting people to contribute more. I think this is also important because if you're, if I didn't work at the foundation and I was just editing English Wikipedia and I heard that the Wikimedia Foundation wanted to change the templates we give to new editors to increase their retention, I'd be like, oh, Jesus. They're going to make them like so warm and fuzzy that they're not even going to be like effective or like be related to the issue at all. But the templates that we included that were actually like said, hello and welcome, you didn't do anything wrong, like 
uh, like, I hope you don't leave, but didn't actually address the issue, like didn't give them concrete steps in order to say participate in an articles for deletion discussion, people still ended up making statements like this, that like the deletion experience made me feel like an unwanted outsider, even though we sent them a message that said you didn't do anything wrong, literally. Um, so I, I think that's pretty important. Uh, another really interesting finding, so we, we gave these messages to everyone, um, whether they were registered or unregistered, and we saw different effects based on whether a, a new user was a registered editor or an IP. Um, for registered editors, this kind of welcoming language, um, not just personal, but also just suggesting that there's a broader Wikipedia community and that we care about this encyclopedia, um, this kind of language worked better for registered editors. Um, so clearly, there's something different about people who sign up and get an account uh, and make their first edits. They're, they're more committed to actually this kind of community that we're, we're all a part of. So that's kind of interesting. And then, at least on English Wikipedia, there's a there's rich an, here. yeah there's an essay <laughs> called "Don't Template the Regulars," and I think it's pretty common practice on other Wikipedias too. But the truth is, all editors get templates, not just new ones. Um, all these deletion notifications, all the all the messages that weren't like very basic warnings, um, were delivered to experienced editors as well as brand new ones. Um, obviously, we chunked up the different results based on edit count and whether someone was registered and that sort of thing. But um, very experienced Wikipedians participated in and got feedback um, from our templates. And they thought it was completely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so do you want to? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, well, so here's how you can help. Um, make your templates better. Um, improve them. Play with them. <laughs> test them. Do different things with them. Um, it shouldn't take you know six years for a new template improvement project. Um, I think we should be doing this kind of stuff all the time with everything that we send to new users. Um, and it's great to, to get data on this kind of stuff. Um, so when you're writing these messages, um, consider writing them uh, as a human and not as a robot or as Wikipedia policies and guidelines state. Um, remember that you know, you're talking to people ultimately and these messages are delivered to new people and you want to communicate to them that you are in fact a human. Um, and by the way, we're also running an RFC on English Wikipedia right now to change all the level one uh, user warnings to our testing approved awesome uh, versions that won. So if you want to check that out, um, this is not canvassing, is it? I think it's canvassing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, and then in, in addition to, uh, we English said this for, for German, but Thank you to everyone from English, German, and Portuguese Wikipedia yeah. who helped us. You guys are um, awesome. A few Thank of you, you so who much. are in the room, I think, um, because we definitely would not have been able to test things in multiple languages um, and at such a wide basis without help. Yes. Yeah. Questions? here for years and nothing much has happened and I think this shows an example of when the foundation is very justified in stepping in and actually Thanks. paying someone money to do necessary work. Thank you. Well, <laughs> On a, on a related topic, um, I know on French Wikipedia and on English Wikipedia, there are now wiki projects that are completely centered on work like this uh, to address yeah. new editor retention. So I think the community is starting to move on its own and take its own direction and, and use its wisdom to figure these things out and not wait for anyone else to do it. So, and, and, uh, there's a whole, I don't know who was first, <laughs> sorry. Uh, did you do any statistics on personalized matches? No, unfortunately. No, we wouldn't have the volume necessary for statistical confidence, sadly, I think. Um, uh, sure, go ahead. Did you ask me about the 
Yes, yes, and all on Meta. Yeah. Go search for template A/B testing. Um, it's all on Meta. Yep. Uh, but I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Way to collaborate, guys. <laughs> um, I don't know who to. Just the, the go ahead, Dan. Oh, I just, I guess, as much a comment as a question. I, years ago, I used to do this. I sort of fallen off the practice, but whenever an I, whenever we had anonymous editors uh, who would revert vandalism or make a little, make a little, you know, bit of a small copy of it, I used to go make the point of going over and leaving them a thank you note for that. And maybe that would be something. Yeah, I mean, I think um, that it's not, it, I think one thing we left out of the presentation was also not just that um, we need to improve the ways we deal with editors who are problematic, but that um, A, we need to figure out ways to pay attention more to the editors who are doing good work than the editors who are doing bad work. And then the other end of that discussion is the foundation's responsibility to improve the software so that it's not so onerous to leave someone a message that you have to use a template in order to do anything at Maybe volume, message wall. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> um. uh, anyone else? Questions? Questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, in Chinese Wikipedia, uh, new users is very difficult difficult to join the community uh, during these two years. Uh, I abandoned to edit Chinese Wikipedia since two years ago uh, because uh, user uh, old users in Chinese Wikipedia uh, do not only uh, do not always use templates; they always reverse the new new editors edit and do not give any explanation. And also, uh, I. I try to, uh, sorry, I try to communicate with them, to be friendly to new users, but but nobody nobody accept it. Do you have any suggestions to Chinese Wikipedians? I honestly don't think we're we're in a position to like. I mean, we could we could make recommendations about how to test or how to implement tools to make it easier to leave messages or to show you the results we have. But I don't. I definitely wouldn't say that you shouldn't test in your own language first before just accepting what English Wikipedia did. Like every la community and every language is vastly different and you can't apply the same brush to all of them. Yeah, we actually had very different test results in the different languages that we tested. So that I think that shows that different communities um, react very differently to different kinds of messages and you have to sort of figure out you know, what your community needs, um, what works there. Um, we should talk yeah. after though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come find us. <laughs> I guess I have to take it by force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I am from Africa, I'm from Kenya. And I think one of the biggest challenges we have is uh, we, have, we have a lot of undocumented uh, information about our culture, about our people. So when you want to do an article on Wikipedia, you have no citation, you have no references. Is there any plans of improving that or do you have any <laughs> proposals? That's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a Jimmy Wales question, as he said. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Wiki Africa project. Um, so I think there's 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 how do you find sources? There's do sources exist? And then there's how do we decide? How do we decide what's a reliable source? Because that's different for every Wikipedia and for every project. Um, that's yeah. not something that I think we are qualified to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Regarding the RFC, did you just try being bold? Like those, if those templates haven't been edited in, in you know, six years and nobody's going to respond to them in the first place, like, did you just change them? Well, I think uh, for a change of that magnitude, it would 
probably get reverted instantly and then we get yelled at and we're evil foundation people so clearly that's not the, fly. These, I mean it's a very it's a very widely it's a big impact change because the tools are used like so heavily like they if yeah. we if we changed all of those templates to say include a giant smiley face that means within a couple <laughs> months you've got like 12,000 giant smiley faces on Wikipedia so we felt it was like the respectful thing to do to acquire some kind of consensus beforehand <laughs> um, any? Cool. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. There's, uh, other information that needs to get out quickly to users that they need to know about for their work on, on Wikimedia projects. Uh, to a large number of recipients across all Wikimedia, or a large uh, number of Wikimedia projects within a short amount of time, right? It's not just. And just to give you uh, an imagination of, of the problem. We often think about uh, the Wikimedia movement as you know this big blob Wikipedia, or the English Wikipedia and of, of the rest. And um, I made this thing yesterday. It's this, um, every icon here is corresponds to one wiki of the Wikimedia Foundation. So you start here from I think the this is the Abkhazian Wikipedia, and I think this is um, it goes alphabetically. This is the Chinese CH, CH wiki, and it's um, 678 wikis in 293 languages. And we can just look, look at this for a moment and take, uh, take it in as a scale of the problem. So it's often that we, <laughs> sorry. Could you understand anything what I'm saying? Or <laughs> cool. Um, so just to give you an idea of the scale of the problem, what are you talking about? If you want to talk to the whole Wikimedia movement. And so, <coughs> What would we want to broadcast? I mean, you've probably seen a lot of these examples. Um, basically, some if um, something is changing in the software that every project needs to know about, we're going to have one, one of this later about when the mobile view recently changed of all Wikimedia projects and the Wikimedia engineers, the foundation agent, they needed to inform every project that they needed to do about something. Or the terms of use update, I think most people have seen this uh, earlier this year when the foundation, after a lot of discussion, adapted new terms of use, and of course, everybody need to know about it. Then we have newsletters that actually all got this involved this, or we both got involved in this uh, first place. Um, we wanted to uh, send updates for the signposts, which many of you might know, to the subscribers weekly, so they know the new issues or oh, this one, the is another newsletter that gets distributed among the projects. Or, you know, also the board votes, um, um, steward elections board votes, um, translators, uh, notification kind of later, uh, improvement drives, this is, by the way, from the foundation's office in San Francisco. If you have a package going out, you place it here in UPS and comes with uh, <laughs> packages being shipped out. And um, of course, we have all these existing mechanisms like mailing lists, right? I mean, Foundation L, now Wikimedia L, and earlier, I think in 2001, already there was Wikipedia L. We have IRC, we have blogs, we have, we have um, also a lot of people use uh, Twitter and Identica now, social media. But we have learned that um, while many people actually go there from the movement, um, many more don't get, go there. And if you really want to reach them, um, you have to know the fan on the wiki. That's where Wikipedians live. So um, that's where you have to go if you really, really want to reach them. And there's a nice essay on Meta which is called Not My Wiki. But people really prefer to stay on their own home pro project. I um, can encourage you to read it sometimes. It's written by Sage Ross. And so what if you want to broadcast on a wiki? Of course, everybody knows village pumps. You go there, you post something, you have a discussion, and people learn about the page at some point, and then they watch it if they're interested. And, um, but of course, it's high noise, so you need time to read all of that to stay updated. But it's still widely used. Um, that's the most widely watched village pump. The English Wikipedia has 2,400 watches. Then we have uh, the central notice, which is the uh, thing that generates all the fundraising banners. But um, it is also used to, uh, to um, distribute messages like the terms of use update, for example, I mentioned earlier. Over here, we have the current one in, on Meta. This is about the, you might have the proposal to adopt the Wiki Travel community as a new Wikimedia Foundation project. So you post this to reach all logged in users on Meta. And there's a calendar actually about um, this also interesting to look at. If you want to distribute something, you can talk with other people. And the problem again with this is it can be easily overused, right? So um, let me do it. 
So, I mean, we had the, in the US, we had the Wicknick recently. So most of the people who live in the US have seen this probably. And it was broken for like two or three weeks. And it was nice. I mean, it worked. I went to the one in San Francisco, and there were lots of people there who had heard about it uh, through the central notice. But I mean, hundreds of millions of others didn't come and also saw the notice. So I mean, just to give you an idea of the dimension, the, if you switch on the central notice for you, for all users, it gets 250 million page views on the Wikipedia alone. That's a real lot. And if you would have, have to pay for that in advertising, it would be probably millions, right? And um, there was a, and last year there was a poll held by one user, Church of Emics on the German Wikipedia, who was also interested in this topic. And he asked people if they felt annoyed by the current use of banners for this kind of messages, not even fundraising. And the large majority said yes, um, they thought the, the better solution was needed. I'm going to talk about this later, or I'm going to talk about it later. But I also want to uh, revisit another mechanism that we have in use, which also only wo works on one wiki, which is the watch list notice. So, um, most people you will notice also. It's kind of inconspicuous. I go to my watch list. And there's lots of uh, messages here, and my watch is actually down below. And um, but if with some practice you can pick it out. So here's the watch this notice. And that's um, still. I mean, it's a it's broadcasting. It gets 80,000 views a day on the English Wikipedia. So you, you reach a lot of very active users, those who go to their watch list, who edit a lot. Then there's a geo notice, which is kind of interesting. It lives in the same place, uh, and on the watch list. And uh, central notice can be carried by country, right? We do it in the fundraiser, so you can do it inside your own country. But this is actually a, has a nice option where you can put in the coordinates. So you see here, um, there's a page on, um, there's a nice Google Maps where you can see all current geo notice. This was from last week, there was one in Britain. And this huge one was uh, actually for Wikimania, I'll show you later. And you see this mall here, this is uh, on the town of Evansville. They had a meetup there, and um, they didn't want to blast the entire English Wikipedia, so they just had this small area. So it's a nice solution for this, although, of course, it's a bit imprecise, as every, or every, everybody who knows about IP geolocation knows about this, but it's, it's quite useful. And I showed the full boom. That's UVL, by the way, if someone's interested. And on the tool server. And you see here that was the wiki. Uh, Wikimania notice. Wikimania is in July 12 to 15 in Washington, D.C. You are invited and all people in this area saw this invitation. <laughs> um, and it looks a bit different. It's a bit more conspicuous because it lives up here. There was the Wikimedia invitation. So anybody came because of this? Or, <laughs> <laughs> or you all registered before, I guess. So um, if you think about this more systematically, so this was a catalog of things that people have constructed so far. And it's all about reaching users in one part of the, if they go to the wiki, reach in one part of the user interface that is conspicuous. And of course, side notice, center notice, do this on top of the um, wiki page. Village pumps need to be watch listed, so you need to tell people, um, if you want to stay informed, please watch this, this village pump. Um, the watch list notice is just one frequently visited page. And of course, there's also the user talk page not notification, which is the sure way to get, get somebody's attention, like um, Stephen Mariana just told that. It's their user talk page, and they get this uh, big banner here. And it's meant for one-to-one uh, -one communication originally, yeah? So, but you can kind of abuse it by posting lots and lots of bot messages if you want to broadcast. And that's what uh, Max Rebuy is going to talk about, because um, he actually d did a tool that we widely used to. We which does that. So, uh, so I'm Max. Uh, I wrote Edward's bot at some point. It, it started for the Signpost, which is a, sort of a weekly newsletter about what was happening in English Wikipedia. Can everyone hear me, by the way? I guess, yes. Okay. Um, and Edward's bot originally started in English Wikipedia and then moved to MetaWiki, where it actually runs global message delivery now. And Edward's bot, just, I guess we'll talk about it a little <laughs> bit, but it's based on, it's, it's named after the 18th century theologian who delivered You're passionate sermons. You can't hear me? You got me? No? Oh, not I'm at all. Oh, you got to hold, hold this one? All right. Is it on? Probably not. Yeah, it's on. Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, so we have Edwards Bot that does global message delivery at MetaWiki to any, any of the you know, 698 Wikimedia wikis. And then you have the Edwards Bot that does actually does just the English Wikipedia and then kind of a split world because there was historical reasons. Anyway. Uh, 
It has about 200,000 edits globally across Wikimedia wikis. About 190,000 of those are just English Wikipedia, and that's a lot of the signposts. So every time the signpost runs, it adds another 1,500 to the count. So other med other other ones like the Glam newsletter or things like that, or you know, they they just sort of bump, bump the count by you know 500, 1,000, and so it's been running for about two years, I think. Yeah, yeah, and so there's an on wiki configuration page where people set up their spam messages. There's an access list to avoid abuse, and then people set, tell it the bot to start. It checks the page every five minutes, and then when it you know when it sees that it's ready to go, it runs and it does it either to uh, the whole Wikimedia you know the global list where it will go to individual wikis and log in and post there, or it'll just do the English Wikipedia where it does like you know a bunch of signposts and it does it with a bot flag and does everything that's supposed to. Uh, MetaWiki is where the distribution, so there's a distribution list, so if, if there's like a, a large tech announcement or something else that, you know, that the Wikimedia Foundation or some other group wants everybody to know about, it's something important, board votes, things like that, steward elections. There's a distribution list that, you know, that someone has built, and so it includes a lot of the village pumps and, and areas where people are, you know, concerned with, who, who are watching on ed, any individual wiki. So the bot will go through, deliver to each individual wiki, and then people see it on their watch list and they read the message. And then some of them will actually do individual things with the message. Some of them will reply to it. Some of them will actually translate it. And we have some pictures of some of this. So yeah, so this is one example. So some people will you know, reply to it and say, you know, this is what we think about it. These aren't really read by the people sending out the message, I don't think, ever. But the other people on, the on that particular wiki will read this and you know, they'll say, you know, this is, they could be saying, this is terrible, I have no idea. But, <laughs> But you know, this is about this is a particular message about adding a mobile view. So they wanted to tell everybody, you know, if, if your product doesn't yet, yet have a mobile view, here's a tech announcement. Add a mobile view. Get it, get it set up. Get ready for it because you know there's certain tweaks in the main page that have to be made, things like that, and then people can read it and respond. Yeah, Another so sort of this is the I think the French were responding. Yeah, it's definitely French. French dictionary was it? I think. Yeah, Fr yeah French dictionary, and then. Yeah, no, we have an image of like the actual. Some, sometimes people actually just translate the entire message, which is nice. And then sometimes you know there's 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 links within there to say you know this is at the wrong page. You can click here and, fix, and you can actually update on MetaWiki. You can just update where it goes to the next time. So if, if your village pump is moved or you want well, you want a different format or what, whatever you want to do there. Yes, um, in, is there something about village pumps? There yeah. could be a separate thread for this bot. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, and some of them, it's the same with like the signposts. Some people are like, they, like you know, the, I think the Dutch have a, just a one signpost page, and so it updates. The bot goes there, edits once a week, and they see everyone sees it on their watch list, and they read it there if they're interested about the English Wikipedia. Some people want it on their individual talk pages, which is actually pretty common. A lot of users like getting things delivered to their talk page. They read it later, or that some people actually you know creep on other people's talk pages and see it on the watch list, and they read it on someone else's talk page. But it just, they, so, you, so you can actually, so anyone can sort of specify either a page, a subpage, or you know, it even actually supports magic words now. So if you want to have it on, you know, 2012, all of my 2012 signposts, I want to be on this particular page. Like you can go wild, and, and it's localized and all that. So. And again, that's a historical reason that basically most projects, even not, not all, have a village pump. I think it's because it was in the default media wiki configuration. Right. So they all thought when they start a new project, oh, we have something called village, village pump in under different names, of course. Yeah, a lot of them, the default Absolutely. I think is community portal, but a lot of them have some sort of similar board or, or we've some, someone has found a way to spam them with a particular message. And it's actually quite some work to find them and update them when, when some product changes their village pump names and... Right, I mean, Wikipedians are not yeah. shy about telling people that they're wrong. So when, when the, it's the wrong page, uh, yeah, people just, fix it, they, so. go, they go and fix it pretty quickly. Yeah. They get very, yeah, they're, they're quick about that. So, going forward. So going forward in the future, there's a couple of big up projects coming from the Wikimedia Foundation, one of which is called ECHO, which is sort of the notica notification framework. And so that's sort of supposed to be like the bedrock of sort of how you do two different broad things. One of them is broadcast messaging, sort of like the central notice, the notice at the top of the page, you know, HTML box that says, you know, give us money, or it says, we want you to come to our WICNIC, or we want you to come to Wikimania. And then the other thing that is sort of the big uh, other piece that Wikia has been working on, other people have been working on, is a sort of a sub-project, which is Flow, which is sort of user-to-user -user messaging and other ways to sort of better handle that. And so that's part of the echo. And there's all sorts of documentation design documents on MediaWiki.org if you want to read more about any of that. And it's sort of all, it's a lot of it's in sort of this high highbrow kind of academic sense. A lot of it, the code is not yet written, but it might be soon, we'll see. I should be clear that posting my bot is really, really awkward and painful, right? <laughs> because 
if you that that posting by bot, I mean, the mechanism is uh, really painful. And right, it's because the current <laughs> system. I mean, it takes. I mean, it's, yeah, people. Yeah. It takes you know a couple hours for it to get through a sign post run because even if it you know does fast editing and has to log in every every wiki or it has to go through all these talk pages and check that a it hasn't already posted before to you know it's a sanity check and then it also has to go through and actually post all these messages, which if you're doing 1500 of anything takes a couple hours, right? And so it's it's not the best system right now. It's also some people have, have complained in the past, they say, you know, content is king, we want to keep everything centralized. And while that's true, especially in the digital age, you want to actually have people go and you know, use an RSS feed or some sort of sane method for doing this, people actually like it on their talk page. It's stupid, but they do. And so, and they get a little, a lot of them, they get an email notification about, like, th they don't get the actual text of the message, but they'll get a, you know, this bot posted to your talk page, and, you know, you can go read it now, and people do, I get that that's how people read this. I don't, I don't know why. I don't get it delivered to my talk page, but <laughs> some people, they love it. I don't know why. I, yeah, so there you go. And then the far future, there's we're talking about global profile, which would be, it's actually sort of tangentially related, but it's also it's about sort of identifying and, and trying to build the database. Oh, I went to sleep there. Um, it's about trying to. So you you would say like you know my I'm interested in glam, which is galleries, libraries, archives, museums. I'm interested in tech. I'm interested in you know administration. I'm interested in soccer or whatever. And so you would actually be able to systematically target users like that and say, you know, we're doing Wiki Project Soccer, or we're going to have a soccer meetup, or we're going to have a soccer WICMIC or something. I don't know. What? People, people, you know, you, or you will have a WICMIC and then play soccer, or do the opposite. Um, so, so things like that, so you'd be able to actually target p and look at p particular interests, and that's part of a global profile. Right now, you can't really query that information very easily unless people self-categorize. I hope that, unlike other social media, you can choose what you are interested. Right, and so, and so yeah, and, that, and that's sort of a big debate about a lot of this. Is so, so some of it's broadcast, and we want people to be just to opt out, like, you know, close the fundraising banner or say, I don't want to really receive this newsletter, you know, even though I'm part of this wiki project. And then some of it is opt-in about, you know, I want to hear, it's, and we, they're all considered pretty much streams or channels, but I want to hear about, you know, soccer, and I want to hear about, you know, football, football, football. Uh, but I don't want to hear about anything about cricket or, or the opposite. I only want to hear about cricket, and I don't want to hear anything about football. And so th those are kind of streams that you would opt into, and you might be able to hear from those particular wiki projects or not hear from them if you're a member and you don't want to hear any of their spam noise article collaboration project, whatever. And actually, if somebody uh, went to Eric's talk in the other room, I think it was, um, and, uh, with regard to wiki projects, which is the mechanism we have for stating your affiliation or identity, there's actually a bit more progressing now. So they already have some, you can see some, you could have seen some wireframes in Eric's talk. Okay. But, um, yeah, in general, we have it. We are good. Yeah, and now we have um, uh, more use cases for this. I mean, mostly this is really uh, picking up lots of use cases that already exist. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the translation notification, where we recently had a new extension for that. If you want to uh, sign up for saying you, you know this language and you are ready to do some translations into these languages, sometimes you can also sign up and get notified for them. But of course, that's also part of this uh, this mechanism, right? So, um, others is um, we match Mickey projects. Um, the other thing is, I mean, all the, the stuff that is on blogs that uh, we, the foundation or chapters, are publishing on their own blogs. Um, there should be a way to read it on the wiki if you're interested right, to sign up for that. And there's some rudimentary mechanisms um, to port this back by bot to a page which you can then watch list. But also, this could be much more elegant using this, such a new mechanism. Another example is, for example, we, in the foundation we have lots um, foundation, we have lots of community-facing jobs where the uh, human resources would actually like to recruit Wikipedians, and they don't have a good uh, mechanism for reaching people who might be interested in working f at the foundation. So there could be a page for that. And yeah, and also we just want to ask you if um, you have any ideas what you would like to use this for, or have used it for and find, found it not useful. Or any other thoughts, suggestions? Question. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. I I mean, how many people have signed up to a newsletter or something like, like this? Some of you are. I see you've got sign posts. I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and how many people have read and acted on um, banner central uh, notices? Well, so a, lo a lot of these things, people actually sign up for themselves. Like yeah, the new users, how do they find out they exist? So, uh, no, no, no. I was say, so some of them, I think, see it on watch lists, and they see it on other people's talk pages. So a lot of, a lot of people, I th 
the way that so the way that a lot of people I think sign up for the signpost is they look at you know they look at their friends talk pages or they look at talk pages of people that they respect as editors and they see and they want to say how do you how did you how did you do that and so some of them actually have a subscribe link or an unsubscribe link in them in the actual message and then some of them no more no more picture for you um, uh, actually it's a very good question I mean the idea would be then if in the future if you sign up that you or when you sign up you say something about your interests or that's this global profile which is by the way it's really just some thoughts I mean, if you're interested you can talk to Brandon Harris, but uh, the idea would really be you're not a new user with, uh, you, you're not a blank slate, but you can really say I'm interested in this area or that area, and then you get um, asked, do you want to sign up to this new letter, newsletter or that uh, notification? So um, that would be the, the future, uh, but it's a good question, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, having some sort of checkbox and like your preferences would be obviously preferable to making it an obscure wiki page that no one can find, but I mean, these people, I mean, you can only, you can only do so much in a day, you know? I wrote the bot. So. Uh, question in the very back. Is it? Okay. Any other question? Uh, uh, I'm interested in broadcasting because I, I, I've done like uh, thousands of edits, but I know that there are lots of discussions where I could help, but I don't because I don't know that they exist. The other in the Spanish language Wikipedia, mm. I propose to add a section in the main page with news like we're discussing, we're voting mm. something. And everybody said, yeah, but who will maintain it? Yeah. And so if we integrated this into the yeah. basis, like yeah. the main page for your, the, the next to the, your user page, like a special uh, news page, right. I mean, that yeah. will help us. Uh, it's actually an example I didn't explain yeah. here. Yeah. There yeah. exists some service on the, the term Wikipedia has that it sends you a notification of current discussions once a week, um, like um, admin votes. That's, I mean, many web projects have that actually, but also summaries. And um, and some also can do it a bit more automated way. There's a bot which goes to that page, looks at all open votes, for example, all open, all open RF, RFCs, requests for comment, and it tells you about these. So yeah, if you're interested right. in this, you go, can go there now and vote or yeah, that, discuss. That would be great because there's, or for example, in, the, in Commons, the deletion, uh, the picture deletion process, the, there's very little people and there are thousands of articles. Right. If That's an, it's another area where I think inner wiki transclusion or being able to put one template, have one template on meta wiki and be able to transclude it onto main pages elsewhere yeah. would be very useful. But that still is, I think, in a branch somewhere. Or the code has yeah. disappeared. Um, yeah, but, but being able to do sort of centralize that, you still, I mean, you still have, you still, I'm sorry, I'm speaking quickly. You still have the translation issues. So, you know, someone still has to actually translate the message because they almost all start in English usually, especially if they're foundation related. But so someone would still have to go to MetaWiki, translate into Spanish, but then you could actually have the main page just always pull the content directly from MetaWiki and keep everything centralized and be able to translate. There's actually translation tools that are actually improving on MetaWiki that aren't so, so awful as they used to be. Other questions? In the back? Okay, now don't get depressed by this question. <laughs> um, I've never heard of anything you're talking about. <laughs> now, uh, in getting ready to come to this meeting, I saw that there was a project called a Wiki Project European Monuments, which was set up to encourage people in Europe to send in uh, public domain, non-copyrighted photos of famous European monuments, and I, a couple hundred thousand people did, and it greatly enriches our the cultural heritage that we can bring into the Wikipedia world. Mm. How would I have found out about that? Did I go to the wrong URL? What, what did I do wrong? I, 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 don't, I don't know how they advertise, but I guess they didn't advertise very well if you didn't find it. Um, yeah, I no, think that's I not true. I, All I know is my talk page and the Wikipedia. Mm. Well, exactly. so this is this is a tool that they could uh, they could have used, and I don't know if they did they either they didn't know about it or maybe they didn't realize that they could do something like this. But and to be fair, I'm not sure my, somebody might correct me on this, but I think last year when it ran, they actually used um, Central Notice. I might be wrong, but this is Wiki loves monuments, right? Is that what WLM? That was in September. Yeah, probably. But yeah, it's a good we'll point. We'll I mean, um, there's many things which are going on, and you don't learn about them until they're over. That's exactly the problem. Right. But then on the other hand, we have a, and this is sort of the broader topic of the conversation, was there's an issue where you spam people all the time. So the fundraising banners run for a month and a half, and then people don't want to hear any more banners about Wikimania or Wikimania applications or proposals or call for deadlines. And then that's just one particular event. There are a million other events where people are Wikmicking and people are wiki whatevering wherever <laughs> and they want to tell the world about it because to them it's the most important project they're working on and they want people to show up to their meetup or they want people to show up to whatever but everyone else doesn't need to know about it and doesn't care 
Yeah, and by the way, if you feel spammed or not, it's, it's a good idea to go to the cent to Meta and to the central notice calendar and help discuss or so before you get annoyed. So right. So people if people have actually been planning out on MetaWiki. There's a central notice calendar if anyone's actually interested in the minute details of central notice. But mm -hmm. they so the, the calendar actually you can actually go and discuss and say this is a terrible idea for a central notice. No one will care about this. And you can <laughs> you can tell people in a blunt way on the talk page and they appreciate that. <laughs> or you can uh, suggest notice yourself. So All right. there you go. Yes, yeah, so if you're an admin, you can just turn them off. <laughs> right. Okay, I think we have uh, two more minutes or so. Any other questions? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Ashish? Uh, have you considered a UI change to where. So, so I, I heard your point about users liking these messages appearing on the talk pages, and I'm actually one of those lame users. Uh, and uh, it seems like it would be super nice. Yeah, there's been there's been a there's a feature request for Edwards bot where I actually so you'd be actually be able to specify the section number. I don't know if MediaWiki supports this, but it, I think it should if it doesn't. Um, but be able to actually say because some people actually like it always to be at the top or they always like to be in a particular area of the screen, and so it gets it gets more complicated because some people want you know the old one replaced completely, and so the bot would have to know you know that was the one from last week replaced the entire section versus you know just putting it always in position two. So there's there's some de implementation implementation details, but if, if somebody wants to work on that, the code is all public domain, and you can and you also hack it, or or I can send you it to, or or you can I can do it eventually. And also, that's one of the design decisions which I think are still being discussed for the Echo framework that we that being set. So right. do you right. want to have XP notice? Do you want to display them all in once? Do you want to bundle them? I mean, your watch list notice in one, the broadcasting newsletters in other boxes. So, so if you go to mediawiki.org and look for Echo, you can see that. Now. Okay. Good. Yeah, I think uh, it's twenty. So, thank you very much.